Ted, what's shaking? Not much, Charlie. Relaxing a little bit. I'm getting ready for these two tournaments coming up. Where are you now? Out in Chicago? Yes, I am. I was talking to your wife earlier. She lined up the call, folks, and she told me she comes from Chicago. Is that where you met her? No, not exactly. I met her sister and brother-in-law down in Miami at the uh, athletic contest down there because they were both wow. speed skaters, and they were in the uh, competition. And then, uh, wow. lo and behold, uh, a few years later, Ran into her again when I was up here for an autograph thing. Started my relationship with her then. That's wild. So were they a team with the speed skating? Yeah, they sure were. One really? was a gold medal winner, Pete Mueller, and his wife, Leah Mueller. She was a silver medal winner in the Olympics. That's incredible. That's incredible. We're coming hot off the Olympics. If you were in the Olympics right now, would you make the trip to Rio with the Zika? <laughs> I'm from Miami, and I and they've got a... <laughs> An epidemic down there. <laughs> yeah, folks, I, I guarantee you got it, Stork. I've been in Miami six months now. I definitely got something. So let's take it back to the beginning, man. What kind of memories do you have of uh, Guatemala City, your birthplace? Uh, we used to go down there every year for vacation. My uh, uncle was working for Esso at that time, which is Exxon now. Mm. And uh, they had a port down there in uh, Puerto Barrios. And also down in Puerto San Jose, we did a lot of traveling around there. So I got to see the whole country. And uh, my first sport was soccer because that's all they played down there. Oh wow! Yeah, and all my cousins were were into soccer, so uh, I joined in with them and learned how to play down there. What position were you in soccer? Forward, and then uh, goalie. You, know, you played all all the positions. Oh, that's wild! So when did you come to America? Uh, I came back when I was a week old. Uh, okay. My mom's family was down there, and and they were my mom, mom and dad were based in Miami, and uh, there was nobody there to help her out or anything. So she, they flew me down by to so she she could be with her family, and uh, I was born down there. And then uh, a week later, I, they uh, flew me back. Did you have great pickup lines in Spanish when you were doing summers down there? <laughs> I had to speak the language because that was the only thing spoken down there. And uh, for me to be understood, I had to learn how to speak it. That's that's what's cooking down here in South Florida, man. I'm telling you, my Spanish game has picked up about 60%. Uh, that's great. Yeah, because you really need it down there. There's a, a big influence of Latin American people from all over down there. Man, so is your Spanish so sharp you speak fluent? Oh, sure is, yep. Oh, man. Perfectamente bien. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, man. How do we say the stork in Spanish? Oh, cigüeña. Ooh. That's, uh, that's very uh, that's very luxurious, and I like that. Okay. Man, so you're going to be coming back to Florida for the 15th annual Ted Hendricks Foundation Charity Golf Event, folks. That's correct. I'm looking at the flyer right now. I love the checkerboard pants they got on you on the flyer. We have a party the night before. And uh, it's usually uh, a theme party. And this year it's uh, celebrating uh, the USA. Mm. So, and it's right near election week also. Yeah, hey, you're so about five days away. Uh, dress uh, in your red, white, and blue. Yeah. And any historical person of notoriety in the United States. Ooh, American icons. Who Name three of your American icon idols growing up. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, oh. yeah, George Washington, and John Wayne. <laughs> oh, man. That's a nice big three right there, folks. What was your favorite thing about Lincoln? Uh, the fact that uh, he stood up for what was right, and uh, uh, he, didn't, he didn't care what anybody said about him or anything else like that uh, because he was doing the right thing. That takes that takes a strong man, folks. In times of sure adversity, does. stand up and yeah. do what's right. Correct. You can, and you can and you can lose your life for that. A lot of guys have lost their lives for that, folks. Correct. And those are real patriots. You ever think of that man in the Revolutionary War? These guys are walking through the woods, getting shot with musket balls. Correct. Dead of winter. Dead of winter. That's like Lambeau right. Field, folks. I was lucky. The year I played in Green Bay, there was an Indian summer that year. <laughs> Oh. So, 
it didn't get cold till after the season was over with. What's the coldest game you ever played in? Uh, I got to go back. There was two two of them. Uh, the playoff game in uh, in uh, Cleveland. Oh, I think the high of the day was twenty one degrees. Ice on the mustache. Right. Did you like to put a lick on a guy when it was cold? <laughs> no, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> what do you mean? It's gonna hurt, it was gonna hurt me as much as it was gonna hurt them. Yeah, I guess that's true, but you're the stork. Come on. <laughs> um, so hey, how competitive do you get with the golf event? Do you go out for the win? Oh, of course. I made the speech for the Raiders every time we played the Dolphins because I didn't want to be embarrassed in my in my hometown. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, they uh, responded, and uh, uh, we had a real good record against them. Even Shula okay. said, I was wondering what, how, how he beat it. we beat him all the time. Man, what's it like to run into Don Shula? You guys got some history. He's, he's your coach on the Colts. You win the Super Bowl together. What's it feel like to watch what you both went on after that to do? It's incredible. Yep, especially what... You know that uh, the Dolphins or the Raiders were going to be in the playoffs somewhere, and uh, we had some great games against each other. I remember uh, one time that uh, they put Don Strock in, and we were two touchdowns ahead, and uh, he kept throwing the ball. And I, I told him, "Hey, run the ball!" And he says he pointed over to Shula on the sideline. You got to talk to that guy. <laughs> yeah. So I yelled over to Shula to run the ball and because it was it was time for us to get out of there. And uh, he didn't like that very much. And then another time there was uh, – we were playing out in Oakland, and they put Matt Moore over me in a tight position because he's usually out as a wide receiver. And it was over close to the sideline where the Dolphins were, and I was yelling at Shula that, to, that it was a supreme insult to put this guy here <laughs> in front of me. Matt looked up out of his three-point stance and said, Ted, i got to watch film on Monday. And I said, okay, Matt, but I know the play's not coming this way, so I'll see you later. And then I went over <laughs> and lined up with Matt Millen on the other side, and he wanted to know what the heck I was doing over there. And uh, the Dolphins didn't check off, and the play was right there, and I made the tackle. <laughs> Man. They, that's some history, man. The Raiders, the Raiders Dolphins rivalry is a very slept on rivalry. Sure is. Even when Clarence Davis made that catch in the end zone to beat him with three defenders around him, Kenny Staber threw that pass. What do you think of the? Uh, what do you think of this new Finn Stadium? All the pictures I've seen is still under construction. Yeah, they take their time down here. <laughs> so, yeah, but the University of Miami has to play there too. So hopefully yeah. it'll be. It'll be convenient for them and everything. Man, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about getting rid of the uh, the Orange Bowl? Well, that was a big mistake. They could have done something about that, but hindsight, it's gone now. But they just had a special on TV a couple of days ago, and I was watching them when they were tearing down the stadium there. And then they put in that baseball field. Uh, rumor has it they can, they, can say, uh, they can even play a football game in there if they wanted to. But at Marlin Park, how that work out right. No, that store. Have you been to Have you been to Marlin Park yet? No, I sure haven't. Ah, I don't know about it. I, I went there. It just it's just I don't know. It's, it looks hideous, man. Outside looks beautiful. Inside's hideous. That's what I was gonna say. The outside looks nice, but uh, yeah, the outside's beautiful. I, I haven't really been inside. Wear your sunglasses because it's all neon green in there. It's like a it's like a huge green screen. And then they got that big, uh, they got the big fish statue in deep center. Oh, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, I go to a lot of the University of Miami baseball games instead. Oh, um, yeah, there's some squad. Being such a legend at UM, I'm down here in Miami right now. And like the Raider fan base, the U's fan base is going to be passionate and it's going to be there, good times or bad times. But what do you think needs to happen right now for the U to get back to greatness? Well, all we have to do is win, that's it all. They uh, they got a great they had a great turnaround in basketball too so and the baseball team be as it may but I wish they would have gone farther in the college World Series mm-hmm. yeah well, it's got to get up there too I'm, I think they did a great yeah. job in hiring Coach Rick 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, we'll see what happens when the season starts. Two of the football brands that people just have a, a real respect for because they have a very cool edge to them, the U and the Raiders. And you help put those two mystiques on both of those brands. you ever think about that? No, I sure haven't. There was a yeah, lot of other people else. involved with all that stuff. <laughs> I'm just a part of it, that's all. Let's talk about the slogan on the 15th annual Ted Hendricks Foundation Charity Golf Event. Always stay humble and kind. That's true. It's been uh, a legacy with me, so I really like that and try to live up to it, too. you got to have a lot of uh, heart to have, uh, you know, help out people. And uh, that's what we do, and we get a big satisfaction out of that. Absolutely. And you're, you're always spreading a, a great name for Raider Nation. And, man, we appreciate that from the bottom of our hearts. Oh, thank you. There's some unique fans out there, but they're, they're really uh, uh, individual fans that uh, really support the Raiders. And uh, they bleed silver and black. How much do you like to see that, those costumes, and, and how, how vivid the Raiders fan base is? Because, man, like I said, you brought a lot of that for us. For I've got us. a lot of pictures of them, too. <laughs> I collect them. <laughs> how, how much did you watch that evolve from when you were playing to now, the costumes and the crowds? We always used to go over to that side of the field there, the black hole. That black hole, baby. Yep. So, Stork, who put the always stay humble and kind mentality into you? Uh, I guess it was my family. Uh, they always delved on the fact that, uh, you know, you you were well taken care of and everything else, but somebody else is not, not as fortunate as you are. And uh, help them out as much as you can. When you went back, growing up, when you were going back to Guatemala for the summers, how much were you seeing that message? Like, you know, that had to be super reinforced for you. For sure, right? it was. Yep, it definitely was. And uh, the thing about it is that uh, uh, Native peoples over there are always, their house was your house. And they always, uh, if they were cooking tortillas or anything else like that, and you walked in to say to say hello to them or whatever, and they'd always offer you what they had, even though they didn't have that much. It really uh, made an impression on me. Big heart, you see. And, and it's amazing when you see sometimes, folks, when people have the least, they're still most generous because you can't, you know, you can't hide a big heart just because you got small funds. That's true. Yep. And uh, not only that, but uh, feel real good if you can help them out in any way and uh, cheer their hearts up. Absolutely. Man. So the 1970s, 1980s, all decade team come up in Hialeah. When you're growing up in Hialeah, is your dream, I want to play for the U? Uh, not really. Uh, I was, the university made it pretty easy for me. They gave me four scholarships instead of just oh. one. And I could have picked <laughs> out whatever I wanted to. And, uh, that was football, baseball, basketball, and, uh, academics. Wow. So there was no questioning that. What well, what sport was your heart in? Oh, well, football is the one. <laughs> I wanted to play baseball and basketball, but we went to two bowl games well, my sophomore and junior year. By the time I got out of football, the basketball season was half over with. And uh, in baseball, they wanted me to go to spring practice first, and then I could go over for baseball practice. And uh, spring practice was uh, really a tedious job there. It really worked out, and I didn't have anything left to go over and lift up a bat go practice baseball so that didn't that didn't do anything either well we got to say we're very happy you went with football honestly oh yeah it turned out to be <laughs> really good for me got you a lot of jewelry four super bowl rings we got a whole we got a whole fist folks <laughs> so we're taking the competitiveness and folks coming up coming right up right after opening day saturday september 17th from 4.30 to 7.30 at Manor Bowl in San Leandro, California, is the Ted Hendricks 8th Annual Bowling Tournament, baby. You ready, Stork? Yeah, I sure am. Matter of fact, we still have a few openings there. And uh, they can go to tedhendricks.com and click on golf or, or bowling 
for info. Headhendrix.com. You sign up right there. You'll see all the information for both events. And a big, big, big shout out to our buddies at the Bad Boys of Barbecue. They're going to be running the grills. All right. So, Stork, do you remember coming from Green Bay the first day, Raiders camp, first interaction with Al? Actually, we went out to dinner with Al and, uh, and Coach Madden. Who's we? Person I had to handle in my contract. Okay. Yep. So you, your agent, bang, you go out, right. and you're with Al and John Madden at dinner. Correct. And uh, we were happy to be out there with them, and uh, it was really something for both of them to be there and uh, actually, you know, saying that we needed you on the team. The thing about it is I, I, I knew half the team already because they were in the Pro Bowls that I was at. Mm. And uh, most of the Pro Bowls were dominated by the Raiders or and the Kansas City Chiefs, as far as the AFL was concerned. And uh, so f- the familiarity there was outstanding, and uh, I felt like I was just adding, being another addition to their great team that they had. So what did it feel like stepping into that defense, man? Were you just ready to let the engines roar? Oh, it sure was. I blended right in with them, and especially with the the chance to block kicks too, mm-hmm. and uh, and get a few interceptions. So not yeah. only that, but I had a lot of sacks too. So <laughs> they had uh, well, they uh, complimented me at the where Cincinnati playoff game. The head coach of Cincinnati said, "I don't care what they paid him this year; he earned it today." <laughs> <laughs> that's a big body. That's a big body coming at you, folks. Oh yeah. Ted Hendricks, Raider Nation, the famous image that Raider Nation will always hold dear, the masks on the sideline. Was Halloween always your favorite holiday? How did the no, no. I'm a bad. I had a reason for wearing that thing because uh, I wasn't starting at the time. It was a long story, uh, but I had that mask on to show that I, because it had a big smile on it but underneath I was really unhappy. <laughs> oh, man, I love that. The stork was not happy to not be starting. <laughs> That's great. Yep. How did it feel in uh, in 79 when they were ready to let you go and Al said, no way, Stork's got a lot left in the tank, and you go on to just destroy people? 78, we lost to the Broncos in 79. Then we picked up on 80, we hit another Super Bowl. And that's when we were the wild card. That probably was the most exciting year of all. All your playing years? All our games were away, right? I remember John Matuzak was out on curfew, and uh, they said that they would have sent him home. One of our players said if they did that on our team, the coach would be the only one standing out there. Good luck catching all of them, folks. Right. <laughs> They're scattered around town like the pins after Ted throws a ball down the alley. Right. And uh, John's excuse was that he was making sure nobody violated curfew. Oh, man. He was checking everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> was Coach ever violating curfew? He was a different was, was And his you rules were real easy to live by, too. So be on time, you know, and... Uh, Follow the rules and do your job. That's it. Very simple rules. Did you ever? Did you ever find yourself on the wrong end of John Madden's temper? Uh, only uh, once. That's uh, when uh, a guy from the press interviewed me after practice because I wasn't starting, and uh, the uh, Raiders had lost two games in a row, and I, I asked. To if it was uh, time for to make a change in the lineup, and John said not yet. So uh, I told that to the press because he was outside asking me about that of the conversation we had, and uh, Madden got upset about it because he said that's what you told me. He said I I gave him the exact quote that you gave me, and uh, he let it go at that. What was the biggest lesson you learned from John Madden? How to treat your, your players, you know, be stern, you know, when you, they're not performing correctly and everything else like that. Try to get them back on track and uh, try not to be too disciplined on them. 
let them let them have a little rope there and uh let them do their own thing let the boys be the boys and let them let right them see. exactly right and let's let's flip that into what's the biggest lesson you learned from al davis he was a uh, consummate owner and knew the knew the game of football which a lot of them don't and the fact that uh, once you made it into the Raider family, you were always part of the Raider family. He uh, has helped out a lot of uh, former Raiders in their in their times of need and everything, and he never for, never forgot anybody. And and Mark Davis has picked up that same tradition. The Raider family is really a family, and it's great to see how Mark's held that together. He doesn't get a lot of credit for that at all, and he deserves it. Correct. He certainly does. And uh, so, he's going to right this ship one way or another. So we're, we're flowing down a positive river right now. That Raider ship is headed in a beautiful direction. I hope so. Stork, how serious do you take watching preseason games? Not too seriously with the the practices that they have. Right. Uh, right. You just have to wait till the last the last game of the, the preseason <laughs> to see what they're really doing out there. <laughs> do, you, do you think it's the last game of the preseason or like week four regular season now? Uh, no. Uh, they should be uh, in tune when the, in the beginning of the season, the first game. We'll see in the, in the fourth exhibition game that they play here. Stork, you personally, if you're going in to camp and it was only 11 days, right, and then you had these games where you only get a practice or two before and they're time limited, do you think that you would be able to perform? Uh, not only that, but they're looking at, because uh, they have a big cut coming up on Saturday that they had to be down to a certain amount of people. And uh, you're trying to evaluate what you have on the field there that's going to help you help you out in the regular season. They're looking at a lot of different things, and it doesn't reflect on anything that was played in the game or anything else. They're looking to see what, what they're going to end up with at the, at the beginning of the season. You know, <clears throat> we had Mike Haynes on last week, and he made a great point. He said, you got to think about these guys that are going out right now that in training camp used to be able to fight tooth and nail for a job and to create an opportunity for themselves. They're not even getting a chance to show the coaches what they can do at practice. Uh, that might, yeah, yeah, because uh, they hardly get into pads at all during the practices. So, right. The players' union is, in essence, hurting the young players with that move. Uh, I guess so. I mean, if you're not giving the kids an opportunity to create a way for themselves. How many guys in your playing days did you see prove themselves at training camp, earn a spot, and turn out to be something? Uh, quite a few. Because if they lasted through that training camp, they they deserved to be mm. make, make the team, right? One of your teammates, Phil Villapiano, came on and said he's worried about the guys uh, being ready to take a hit after not having any contact and going full speed. Do you think you'll see more injuries this year? I hope not, but that that could be a factor. And like I said, I hope not. You're a physics major in college, huh? Correct. Is there any physics we could put in there? Where? Sure. Where? Momentum. <laughs> <laughs> right. Acceleration and. Uh, there's a lot of physics in that. What, what blew your mind about physics? What made you want to get into physics? Uh, actually, it was uh, uh, math-based, and uh, I was very good in mathematics. So, and the space program was going on at the same time. So, that's what really and piqued my imagination. Can I tell you about something? One of my cousins, he's a He's going to the U now, and he uh, he's real into physics, right? So he's telling me about this company, SpaceX. Did you ever hear of this company? Yeah, I sure have. Raider Nation, they're talking about within 15 years sending up. Well, right now they're working on reusable shuttles, right? Correct, and right. They want to send, in within 15 years, flights up there, commercial flights with with, with people on board. When do you think we're going to see space travel become something successfully commercial? I don't know. It, they're, uh, 
doing miraculous things with the phones and everything else that uh putting all that information in there that it's really uh mind boggling that they they're moving so fast on everything and time goes fast we you know we were talking about how some people now right now alive have seen the transition from horse and buggy to car Imagine you take that same amount of time. Imagine what we're going to see, folks. If they put you right now, if they said to you, all right, Stork, we can send you the first gold jacket in outer space. You're going on one of these test flights to Mars. Would you do it? I don't know. I'm pretty up, I'm pretty up in age. <laughs> oh, no, come on. Six months, Stork. You got six months, you're on Mars. We might have to send Otis Sistrunk with you. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Folks, when you when you're looking Ted Hendrick's accomplishments, if they put if they told me first gold jacket in Mars, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, that'd be quite an honor. As an international man, did you ever think the the NFL would go international in your playing days? Uh, there's a lot of uh, football fans down in the Latin American countries. Yep. As a matter of fact, I have a league going on in Central America. But they're, you know what they're getting their players from is from the military. <laughs> Raw. <laughs> that's a bad idea. So that's, that's something. Yeah, right. How are the games? I haven't been to one. They send me pictures of them, uh, the players in there. Oh, we should go to one, Stork. I want to, I'd love to sure. go to one of those. Well, they got a game in Mexico this year. The are you going? Team. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mexico City. That's going to be something else. What's that going to be like to, to step into Mexico City? Is that going to blow your mind to see the... Oh, no, I've been there, there before. Uh, How do you like it? That's pretty good. Uh, it's the same elevation as Guatemala City, 5,000 feet up. Wow. You don't think about uh, Mexico as being that high. How high is Denver? 5,000, too. Really? So you're telling me Mexico City is the same elevation as Denver, Colorado? It might be a little higher than that. That's incredible. Yep. Did you have great lungs when you touched down in the States? <laughs> I don't know. It didn't It didn't bother me because we used to have training camp up in uh, Golden, Colorado when I was with the Baltimore Colts. Probably one of the Colorado? reasons they wanted to do it is to get our lungs, lungs bigger. So can you... You can hold your team's camp wherever you want in the country. Right. Is that true today? Yeah. Really? So you could, every year you could change that if you wanted. I, yeah, I guess so. Cause, uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. That was back when they were looking for other places to play. So they moved their training camps around. Open up those markets. Right. Now they're opening up markets international. You think we'll see an international team in the next 10 years? Yeah, it looks like it. Yep. Because how many games do they have out in uh, England this year? Three? Yeah. Yep. But do you, how do you think that will affect the game? That's interesting. I don't know. It's a pretty long flight, so better give them a, time to get acclimated and everything. When the And the Raiders, prime example, folks, we've seen in the past years, sometimes when you got to make that west to east flight, doesn't work out so well. Imagine flying around the globe and then padding up. Right. Imagine playing for that team. Oh my God, having to having to fly from England six times a year or eight times a year. Oh yeah, exactly. Who's gonna play for that team? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, folks, get geared up because Stork's going on tour. And he never stops. Eighth annual Ted Hendricks and Friends Charity Golf Bowling Tournament coming up, followed by the charity golf event. TedHendricks.com. Bowling or golf, whichever one you want, folks. TedHendricks.com has got you covered. We'll have the links out to everyone's store. I wanted to yeah, r- plug my award also because I went. I go to the I go to the combine every year to look at to watch the guys that were the finalists for the my award. And uh, Khalil Mack was there two years ago, and uh, really? I thought he was the best athlete of all. And, We got him on our team, so a lot of my award winners are still playing in the National Football League, and uh, a couple of them have have been uh, defensive players of the year. Oh, man. uh, Yeah. So how close are you with the selections for the award? Take us through it. I only get one vote, so. (laughs) 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 Yeah, my selection committee is made up of uh, the 
scouts, the pro scouts, and uh, the head coaches of the colleges around the United States. And it's not limited to, you know, uh, what uh, division you're in as far as college is concerned. Anybody's, anybody can win the award. And they also That's have awesome. to do community service, as a matter of fact, which is a big thing in the award presentation. Really? So take us through that. What are the qualifications to win the award? Or to be to be nominated for the award? Even? Well, first of all, you got to get the, the votes from the the, the committee. selection committee, right? And also, you have to uh, show some community service and also be a, a good student. Complete, complete package. Correct. Because Ted Hendricks is complete package, folks. Four different offers from Miami, man. So, what's the proudest vote you've ever casted? Like, who who'd you watch go the furthest? Uh, probably Elvis Dumerville for him and his size. And he's the one who made the defensive player of the year. How close are you on the pulse of the college football scene? Because you have the ultimate scouting thing right in, right there. Uh, yeah, we we have a uh, uh, list that comes out preseason of uh, potential winners. And uh, we ask the coaches to fill in anybody else they'd like to nominate. And then... At the middle of the season, we have a vote come out, and then uh, then we have uh, select uh, the ones that have been got the most votes. We put them in a, another vote a week or two later, and then there's the finalists vote where six of them or, or four to six of them get have the final vote, and then the, then the, uh, the winner is uh, determined. That's a, that's gonna be a proud night every year. And it's got to be awesome for you to watch the season play out, watch these guys continue their careers. You got, you know, there's sure. got to be a special exactly. eye on them. Yep. Store keeps flying, the wings keep spreading, and seeds keep planting everywhere, baby. Right. Store, All right, Charlie. Handle business. Wreck them out there with the pins. Wreck them out there with the golf clubs. All right. And uh, any last words for Raider Nation? They're always close to my heart. And uh, go Raiders. Raider Nation. From the Raider Rally Road Trips, our organization queen, Miss Nikita Porter. Nikita, how are you? I'm wonderful. How you doing? Lovely in- introduction. I appreciate that. Yeah, I got I to gotta do it right because guess what? You always do it right for Raider Nation. I try. We try. Ken and I try our best. Big shout out to Ken Webb, too. So let's tell him. Let's get him ready for game one, September 11th, Raider Nation in New Orleans. Take it away. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Um. When we get in Friday, we will be having a meet and greet party, pajama party. You don't have to wear your pajamas, but, you know, Raider gear, whatever, it's all good. I might break out the silks. (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) We will be at, that'll be at the Hilton Garden Inn. So um, we won't be there too long, 11 o'clock, it'll be over with. So you can go out in the streets, Bourbon Street, hang out, party, Mm -hmm. kick it. Saturday morning, we're going to get up early and do a VIP tour around the city of New Orleans, see what hot spots they have, going to see um, some historical sites, and also definitely see um, Ninth Ward, see how things are developing in that area. Um, Absolutely. And then we do have our eating contest at the Tell me about the food challenge. Oh, yeah, the food challenge is going to be off the chain. So what um, we have three teams. And what they're going to okay. do is they're going to eat their hearts out. They have <laughs> – this restaurant has these platters that are just huge, oysters and shrimp and every piece of fried seafood you can imagine. So oh, we have uh, three teams. We're going to see what they what they come up with. So it'll be that will be exciting. So um, that includes, you know, everyone gets to eat and have a couple of drinks. So it will be a good time. Oh, I want to cover that live on Facebook for Raider Nation. Okay, just let me know. Hit me up and, you know, let me know where, you, where you're going to be at, what you want to do. We got to get Zach Crockett at that food challenge. Oh, yeah, let's let's talk to him. Yeah, it was so funny. He um, People thought my husband was him. <laughs> he's just a little bit taller than him, but he's got dreads, the same complexion. Too funny, but that's my buddy. I so, love me. So if we that. don't get ZC, if we don't get ZC, we put hubby in the, the ZC jersey and say we got ZC. <laughs> <laughs> they won't know the difference. They won't know the difference. <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. So, 
get us ready. Take take us back to your first time in New Orleans. What, what was it like for you seeing that city first time? Oh, first time I went, um, I had just started dating my husband, and oh. he was playing at that time. So he had a game, and me and all my girlfriends went out there, and they couldn't really hang out with us because they had curfew. But when I tell you me and my girls were in the streets just running wild, I mean, <laughs> we, we went. We were up and down Bourbon Street drinking, having a great time. We just couldn't believe you could walk around with drinks, and they were so cheap. We were like, what? Double drinks for $5? Like, yeah. Sign wow. Up. So, yeah, we and had outside, a ball. You could walk around outside? Oh, yeah. You're down Bourbon Street. You Bourbon Street is open to do whatever you want. You will see sites you never thought you could see. Oh, wow. I mean, people, they have these burlesque shows and the women come out, you know, they're trying to get people to come into their venues. Their so bars, right. They're walking, oh, yeah, they're walking around showing you everything you can imagine. And, of course, people are trying to get beads, so they're definitely <laughs> th- showing all their business so they can get a couple of beads. <laughs> oh, man, there's going to be a lot of silver and black beads thrown around Bourbon Street. I'm telling you that much, folks. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. So what about this Friday night neon bike tour? Oh, yeah, that is, um, Ken will be at the bike tour, and I'll be at the um, pajama party. But uh, when Ken and I took a trip out there just to get there a little earlier, and we were walking around, and we seen this tour of bikes, and they had, they were lit up, and they were neon, and it's an awesome tour. They take you through the city of New Orleans, and, you know, you have music playing, they stop at a different couple of different venues. You get a couple of drinks, and it's a two-hour-long tour, and it is just awesome. That is going to be that'll be one of the highlights as well. Wow. I'm looking. I'm right now on the event page, and Raider Nation. If you're on Facebook, they got an event page set up for you to start searching uh, Raider Nation New Orleans takeover, and uh, and you'll see it there. I, there's Raider Nation coming in from all over the map to kick this season off. Yeah, all over the place, all over the U.S. It's going to be bananas. Everybody going to be meeting up at the tailgate on Sunday? Okay, this is what, let me tell you. Saturday, I'm going to tell you about the Saturday night party, which is going to be okay. off the chain. We have Lincoln Kennedy coming through. We have Ted Hendricks coming through. And we have some some other special guests coming through. We are taking over the entire Bourbon Cowboy Club. So Ooh. we will have beads you can throw over to anyone and everyone you see. Also, it will be an open bar. And oh, wow. Yeah, it's from 7 to 10. They'll have food and an open bar. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty off the chain. And, of course, Everywhere, everywhere we go, we have a raffle. So we will definitely have a raffle, and we have some awesome, awesome items that will be raffled off. But Sunday, check this out. We've hired a band to walk oh, us I'm... through the streets of New Orleans. Are you kidding me? No, I am not. We have hired a band. We will be walking. We have um, our location set up. We're just waiting for all of you have to get permits. So we're waiting for our last little permit. And we we also have to have police, so we're getting all that signed off. We should have that early this week, so we'll be able to tell you where the tell you where we're starting at. But we are having a full blown parade with the music and everything, walking to the, the streets stadium. <laughs> to the stadium. Yes, sir. Oh, walking through the streets, New Orleans. Not let us out. <laughs> hey, we try and do our best. Ken and I try and do our best. We want to give you the whole feel in New Orleans. You can't you can't do New Orleans without throwing some beads and doing a parade. Oh, and then when the raiders come marching <laughs> in, in the you already be know. Beautiful. <laughs> yes, it is going to be awesome. We have some Folks. wonderful things planned. Folks, what what fan base have you heard? First of all, throws an entire weekend and then hires a band to march in. Into the stadium, down Burb. Oh, what a, what a classic weekend this is going to be. We don't do anything little. No, you can't. You can't when it's silver and black, baby. You got to do it big. If you're going to do it, do it big. Or don't do it at all. Hey, and guess what, Nikita? This is this is the Stork's episode right now. How perfect is it that the Stork is going to be on Bourbon Street with us? Isn't that crazy? Ah, oh, that's going to be so awesome. It's going to be a wonderful thing. And the cool thing about our Saturday night party is from 7 to 10, 
So after 10 o'clock, go kick it. Go hang out on Braven Street. Go see what New Orleans is about. You know what? I, I feel like maybe 70% of Raider Nation that's planning on going to the game is going to get there. The other 30 might be left on Bourbon Street from Saturday. <laughs> Yeah, you got a whole day planned for racing. Man, it, it, it's, it's going to be awesome. Well, we're trying, you know, everybody doesn't come to every event, but we're trying to give everybody a little bit of flavor of things to do. Absolutely. Thank you so much for what you do for Raider Nation because you, you really you organize this and you make it as simple as showing up, get your tickets, folks, ahead of time because these are selling out fast, and everything's laid out for you to have a great time. Yeah, we try our best. We try our best. We've been doing this for a couple of years, about five years now. So, we, you know, we're trying to grow every year. Have a good time. Just make sure our, our people have a good time. Absolutely. What was the first Raider rally you guys threw? Um, Ken and I worked together on Atlanta. And I live in Atlanta in my booster club. Um, I'm actually the person over all the events. And we ended up taking over Centennial Olympic Park for a tailgate. We had oh, over wow. a 1,000 people there. So. Wow. It was pretty, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Is there a lot of Raider love down in Atlanta? Like, or did that thousand come from all over the place? All over the place. I mean, our booster club has about two to three hundred people in it, but oh, people wow. came from all over. Yeah, people came from all over. People were all over. I can't wait to get to Atlanta. And you guys got to be pumped for that week two matchup, oh, yeah. too, against the Falcons, yeah. huh? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. I'm thinking about coming home for that weekend. We'll see. We'll see. So where's home? Is home the West Coast? Yeah, I'm originally from Northern California, from the Bay Area. Oh, wow. So when did you move yeah. to Atlanta? I've been out here since 96. I moved out here with my brother, who taught me all about the Raiders. <laughs> yeah, well, Nikita, I can't, again, I can't thank you enough for, for what you got lined up for us down in New Orleans. I can't wait to get down there, meet up with you, and get to party with the Raiders. Oh, nation. definitely. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time out. I want to talk to little old me, but Ken and I are excited about this weekend, and, you know, you guys just hit us up if you need anything, any questions, concerns. We're ready. And remember, folks, if, you, uh, if you're if you looking for the party, just start searching in that Facebook search bar, Raider Nation in New Orleans, or Road Trip Rally, and it's going to pop up. You're going to see it right there. Already 594 people saying they're going, folks, on this page. This is going to be something else. And the hashtag that they're using is hashtag RN So that's RN <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much, Charlie. I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. Absolutely. And we'll check in with them again after uh, after the event. I can't wait. Oh, definitely. All right, hon. You have All a right, good one, sir. and I'll talk to you soon.